Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon heads to a quaint little town in New Jersey and makes some horrific discoveries. There's a frightening bridge. It says chicken against raw chicken. And some disturbing dishes. I cannot believe this is how you guys are running a restaurant. One of the owners lives in fear. I'm afraid of the unknown. The other lives in a world of his own. I find it hard to believe that it's really as bad as he says. Together, they are a lethal combination. You're gonna kill someone. Palmer's in fucking crime. Can Gordon get through to the owners before it's too late? If I want to learn to cook like you, I'll definitely buy your cookbook. Or is the food in this historic town about to make history. Switch it off and condemn it. This is one Valentine's Day you won't be able to forget. This is a Valentine fucking massacre. It may only be an hour outside of Manhattan, but the quiet town of Cranberry, New Jersey feels like it's thousands of miles away. In this historic village is a little French bistro called Hannah and Mason's. Friends Chris and Brian were co-workers here under the previous owners and jumped at the opportunity to buy the restaurant three years ago. Can we get serious now, please? All right, come on, focus, focus. I was afraid from the beginning to take the restaurant. Oh, what the fuck am I doing? This. I was also a little short of cash. So I figured Brian knew the operation. We worked together already, and he had the other half of the cash. We could do this. We could do this. But looking back, no, I don't think I would go into business with Brian. This was a mistake. I'm very laid back, and I, I don't think I let a lot of things bother me. Oh, Brian, you suck. Whatever. Brian's very lazy. Brian can be lazy. Brian needs to step up a lot. I just find it difficult to be motivated. That's just how I've always been, and I find it difficult to change. When your heart's not in it, why doesn't anybody else be in it? Why? I agree. My partnership with Brian is not equal. Enough. Enough of this shit, please. I generally pay most of the bills. I spend a good portion of the day ordering food, doing prep lists, working on menus. Generally, I'll work the line for most dinners. Brian, why are you clean? Hold on. I don't particularly like to work the nights, so we're only open three nights a week for dinner. Done. There's no more to be had. I really don't think we're losing out on any business. There's nobody here. People call and they ask, you know, can I come in on Tuesday? And no, we're not open. And you can't bring in the customers. You can't bring in the money. We're having a very tough time making ends meet. It has been increasingly more and more stressful to come in and look at how much we owe money to and the bills are piling up. And it's, it's a little too much stress for me. All right, this pretty much sucks. Hopefully, we make some money tonight. I go to try to deposit my paycheck in the bank, and I can't because there's no money. I get sick of how much money we spend on bounce check fees. It's, it's a horrible feeling. Oh, my gosh. If Hannah Mason's ever had to close, I would be lost because I wouldn't be able to support my daughter. You know, for me, it's a career. I don't know anything else. I don't want to really know anything else. I'm trying to hold out for hope. If it goes on much longer, I don't know what I'm going to do. What a beautiful, quaint little town. I can't think of a better way to spend Valentine's Day at Hannah and Mace Mesa. I guess I couldn't afford the end. That's not a good start. Right. Here we go. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Follow me. Hello. OK. Excellent. That's fine. That'll be it. So you are? Nick. 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 Yes, OK, sir. great. Nice cool. to meet you. Hi, Watch. Good to see you, too. And um, what do you do here, Nick? I'm the manager here. Manager. Mm -hmm. you're young. I am very young, yes. I'm only 23 years old, and I bust my ass out day in and day out. Chris. Yes. He's sitting down. He's very cute. <laughs> When I saw him walk through the door, and I says, oh my gosh, look at this man. <laughs> this is Marie. She's going to take Hello, care of Nice Hi. to meet you. Gordon. Marie. Happy, Happy Valentine, my darling. Happy Valentine's to you. Excellent. Is this a picture of your wife? Yeah, that's my dear lady, yes. Can I see? Oh, please, yeah. That's the 14th Valentine's Day. We haven't been together. She's beautiful. Thank you, my darling. Can't wait to taste the food. I would suggest just to start off with the baked onion soup. 
Right. Are you asking me or telling me? If you want my suggestion, baked onion soup. Let's go for that, shall we? OK. Um, the quiche, yes. a little slice of quiche. OK. Thank you. Um, I'm fascinated by the lamb lollipops. OK. Lovely. Got that. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Hmm. Well, the start might be onion soup, that's for sure. We're going to start with onion soup. OK. Some people might say, oh, French onion soup is French onion soup is French onion soup. But I think ours have a distinct, you know, presentation. Wow. Let's start off with zero out of 10 for presentation. Lovely. Ooh, greasy. Kate with cheese. Kate with bread. The only thing missing is the soup. What is that in there? Absolutely tasteless. It tastes like I've just had the dregs from the dishwasher. Hardly any soup. That is shocking. That was very different. Did you like it? Um, uh, once you got rid of all the bread and the cheese and the gunk, it just okay. very, very bland. But I'll bypass and hopefully the uh, lamb lollipop will be tasty. What those mess? Thank you. You're welcome. Fine dining. A fine mess. And he didn't like this. <laughs> Off to a great start, ladies and gentlemen. Once he got past all the, the gunk with the bread, he said the broth was just bland, and he's never experienced anything like that before. He's never experienced anything as amazing as that. We've gotten, you know, fairly good reviews here, so I find it hard to believe that it's really as bad as he says. Say something, Chris. Get mad, Chris. I want Chris to get pissed. Uh. This is not going to go good, because if I can't get him with the French onion, I can't, I'm, nothing's going to be good. Wow. That is a big, big lollipop. My goodness me. It's an absolute nightmare to, to cut. Undercooked. It's hideous. Chris, no matter what anybody says, I still think you have the best onion soup and the best lamb. If he talks shit about the lamb, he's, he's out of his mind. It's completely <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> that sauce there. That's hideous. It's like a caramel. It's sweet as anything. Very. Um, what did you say that was? A roasted garlic jam. God. Nick, would you have a little taste that? It's like someone's put a topping of a granulated sugar caramel. Although Gordon didn't like the lamb, all the employees and all the customers think that that's our best dish. Very sweet, the sugar. Suddenly, the lamb is raw, and it's obviously cold in the middle because it hasn't rested. OK, let's, uh, let's go with the quiche. Uh, darling, I, I, you've got to turn away now. I don't want to see you facing that shit any longer. Absolutely appalling. You said he ordered a rare, not raw. And the sauce is a spoonful of sugar. So, Chris, why, why did that go out like that? Where's my car keys? You got to go out there next time he says something. Hey, yeah, I will. I will. You start to sound like my wife now. You're cowering. Whatever. I don't know. Chris is, is definitely scared of somebody telling him his dishes aren't good enough. It frustrates me as a manager because he needs to put his foot down sometimes. Here, possibly, my darling, they're going to be saving the best for last. Lovely. And what flavor quiche is it? It is mushroom and spinach. Mushroom and spinach. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Damn. My quiche has collapsed. It's gone into, like, this sort of meltdown. It's almost like it's been left out of oh, refrigeration all day. And as for the salad, well, you do. Get really nervous when the ends of the salads are all black. Hmm. I have a feeling I'm getting yelled at already. Um, they sort of collapsed and went all sort of um, runny and soggy. I'm sorry. Huh? Happy Valentine, my darling. Thank you. Oh, good. Now, he cut into it and it just collapsed and it's all gooey inside. And... The customers mostly have good things to say, so it's a little shocking to hear someone say that almost everything that we served them was horrible. Bye, darling. This quaint village had put Gordon in a pleasant state of mind. His name is Chris. Chris, and where's the brigade? Unfortunately, the food destroyed it. This is my partner, Brian. Brian. Yeah. I'm not really nervous to meet Chef Ramsay. You know, we thought everything was gross, but whatever. OK, lunch was hideous. It's really important, before we go anywhere, I need to know the, the foundation. How many nights a week are you cooking? Well, we're only open three nights a week for dinner. <laughs> Are you open three nights a week? Why? Being ridiculously cautious and fearful and the way I've led my entire life. You played safe. Yes, sir. But sending those kind of messages out to the local community that you're closed longer than you're open 
is telling the locals you're closed. If he wasn't here, what's his weak points? He doesn't have a love or a passion for the business itself. So how come you're passionate and you're not? We're just different people. Yeah, business is a business. Yeah, it's a restaurant. Yes, I love to cook, but it would be easier sometimes just not to own a restaurant. When was the last time you made a decision? I made a special. What was it? Turkey panini. Turkey panini. Right. I, I'm just, you know, I don't know what you're looking for. Passion, strong will, determination. You look like you're just about to lose your virginity. <laughs> Sorry. Something needs to happen to relight this flame. Now I'm going to see how you operate it, OK? I'll see you in two minutes. Right now, I am absolutely unfocused for dinner. I, I, I'm going to be thinking everything I send out is, is shit. Unbelievable. All right, let's just get focused and let's get ready for dinner, because dinner is going to be a debacle. Coming up... Hey, Panini head! You're going to kill someone! It's a bloody night at Hannah and Mason's. This is a Valentine fucking massacre. When Gordon takes a stab at the kitchen staff. What are you doing to people? Give me an answer! Let the bloodbath begin. And one appalling blunder... Chris, it's fucking chicken against raw chicken! ...pushes Gordon to the edge. You just contaminated the town! I didn't know I was going to do this bad. <laughs> Gordon was shocked to find out that Hannah and Mason's is closed more than it's open. But this is Valentine's Day, a day when all restaurants are busy. This is our special um, Valentine's Day menu. And a great opportunity for him to observe a dinner service. We've got a lot of spinach here. OK. So we have two tables upstairs, right? How many people do we have coming in in the immediate future? I knew that going into Valentine's Day and knowing that Chef Ramsay was going to be overseeing everything that was happening, I was definitely a bit nervous. Dear, oh dear. So, uh, is that ready to go out, man? No, sir. Display purposes only. Seriously? What the fuck is that? It's apple cobbler. When was that made? Well, it's anyone's guess, Chef. I mean, not more than a week ago. And... Holy shit. That's a, uh... A molten lava cake? A molten lava cake? Yeah. No, a molten rock. Yeah. Lava rock. Well, so okay. what did you do with that? Well... Did you play ice hockey? No, that's, again, display purposes only. Right off the bat, we, we were in the shits right off the bat. Why would we even think about going to a customer with something a week old? Oh, we should have. Thank you, Chris. Brian. Yes. No, that doesn't look good at all. I agree. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Hello? Get rid of it. OK. Yeah. As tensions mount in the kitchen, customers are about to celebrate one of the most romantic nights of the year. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Um, I wanted to go in and thinking of leaving. So food sat up there, nobody taking it. I didn't hit the bell. What? Huh? At least you don't work for a long time. I could never. <laughs> no way. No fucking way. I think after the first day, I would just leave and never come back. I wouldn't even care if I didn't get him paid. <laughs> Chef Ramsay telling me that, you know, we do things the wrong way just doesn't really work for me. Oh, my God. Ryan. Yes. Two seconds. And he, like, never shuts up. <laughs> Who's checking this stuff? Does, does this guy just send food out? Yeah. So who's checking it? Nobody's checking Nobody, it. Nobody, no. OK. There's lettuce all fucking rotten there. Yeah? Lettuce rotten uh, there. Yeah. Fist, you got to pick through the lettuce yeah. better. I really am trying to. Like, I'm not well, even... These ones are no good with the rotten lettuce. Let's just go. Oh, fuck me. Where's this coming from? Jesus Christ almighty. Sir, has it been washed? I did not wash that. No. I did not know. We don't wash spinach? We get it pre-washed. You get it pre-washed? That's the first. Oh, look, every time I dig my hand in, it's all rotten. And it just do you. Just toss it. Yeah, it's gross. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't toss it. Why don't you eat it? No, I'd rather not. You'd I rather wouldn't, not. I wouldn't eat it. But you charge people for it. OK, there you go. You shouldn't, this shouldn't be sent out. No. You should open your fucking eyes. We'll try to fix whatever issues we have, but I can't. I'm not going to cry in the corner about it. You know, life goes on. So. Upon further investigation, Oh, my God. Gordon discovers that something is missing from the display-only dessert tray. Have we served that dessert on there? Yeah. Here we are. That 
dessert's been served from there. That's not good. What's this here? It's been leaking in the fridge. What, what? That's really old. It's a bread pudding. That's a bread old. pudding. Sure. That's a shrimp. Fuck it. What's that? Yeah, that's disgusting. Why is it bubbling? Because it's old. That's gross. We'll get rid of all of no, this. No, 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 no. Nick, I know you're busy. Yeah, I'm fucking shitting myself now. I feel when, you know, things aren't going good, I, I just as soon get out, you know, just move on to the next thing. Yeah, where's Brian? I know you want to run away from it. I'm not running no, away. No, I can't run away from it. Yeah, I've just been watching and fucking shitting myself for the last hour. What are you doing to people? Give me an answer! You know, we can't oversee everything we assume that... You know. OK, take me down to the fridge. I want to see how you fucking really work. I cannot believe that this is how you guys are running a restaurant. In my head, I was thinking, we're going to be screwed. That's what in there? That's the walk-in freezer. The freezer. That's the walk-in freezer. Look at the mess here. What's this here? Bacon. Yeah, obviously, bacon smiles. That's from lunch. Yeah. Yeah, five years ago. You leave a spatula in there like that. I'm sorry. Nah, fuck off. I cannot believe what you guys are doing here. There was so much going on. My head was spinning. My head was going to explode. I, I, I thought to myself, this is a disaster. What's that in there? Shit, that didn't get put on. Oh, my god. I don't know what the fuck oh, that's all Oh, fuck that. Oh, my god. Oh, no. This is not good. Raw chicken. That should never happen. You know, should... Oh, my god. Chris, it's fucking chicken against raw chicken. It's, it's fucking. Hey, panini head, are you listening to me? Yes. You're going to kill someone. I'm eating here. Partners, partners in crime. You should be ashamed. We are ashamed. You've just contaminated the town. And Nick, Nick, yeah. stop. Yeah, everybody, right now, this is not a romantic eat out. This is a Valentine fucking massacre. It's a disgrace! How can you do this? I'm closing the place down. Switch it off! It's Valentine's Day, the busiest night of the year for restaurants. But what the customers don't realize is that some shocking discoveries left Gordon with no other choice but to shut it down. Switch it off! What do you want me to tell the people? I'll tell them. You tell me then. What are we going to tell them? Or you think I'm going to stand here and watch you serve contaminated food? No. Yeah. Yeah, fucking shut it down, switch it off, and condemn it. I knew that we were going to run into some problems tonight. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. Mark, turn everything off. That's it. We're done. No one touches or serves any food right all the way down. I suggest you start coming up with some suggestions to the customers, yeah? Yes, yeah? sir. Yeah? Hurry up, Brian. Um, Chef Ramsay is shutting us down. I feel absolutely horrible, and uh, certainly not something uh, I expected. Just, just for the easy. Never in my wildest dreams thinking that we would have to shut down. This is the most horrific thing I've ever had to deal with in my life, quite frankly. I felt horrible. What I've just discovered. It's totally unacceptable. Enough's enough. Chris. Yes, sir. If you are passionate about food yes, and sir. you feel deeply about it, I want to hear it. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to, to tear it down and start over. You've got a big pair of balls facing those customers tonight. What they can say for the partner that you are in business with. Where were you? How many tables did you talk to? How many customers did you apologize to? No. How much support did you give the waitresses, the manager? Damn. That's right. You were doing jack shit, mate. I do feel like I carry the bulk of the restaurant. Oh, it absolutely bothers me that Brian doesn't take on some of those things. You make me sick. Unbelievable. On a night when they should have been busy serving, the staff finds itself cleaning up the mess. I don't even know where to start. I mean, I never really thought I'd be in this situation. I'm really trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm trying to hold out for hope. 
Of course I'm worried. This is my life. I need those customers to come back. Before Gordon unveils his plan for change, he explores the town of Cranberry looking for inspiration. This whole town is built up on farms. Perfect position to have a local restaurant. Wow. Amazed by the number of local farms in the area, Gordon decides to check out the seasonal produce. Hello, ladies. Huh? So Welcome to Turhan Orchard. Delicious. We're glad to have you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you. amazing. Just well, driving around yeah. locally and just looking at some of the farms. I mean, it's a chef's dream. <laughs> we pick everything every day. Amazing. And in terms of variety of apples, how many do you have here? We grow 35 different kind of apples. Pretty good crunch there. Mm, delicious. Right, shall I uh, just help myself? Yes, your yep. favorite. Fill it in. Excellent. Lovely. Look at the size of these. Great. That is amazing. Yeah, I'm going to put these to good use. Excellent. What are you going to make? Uh, oh, that's a secret. You're going to have to come for dinner. All right, we're available. Thank you. Inspired by the fresh, locally grown apples, Chef Ramsay heads back to the restaurant to work on a special he has in mind for tonight's dinner service. Right, what are they called? Apples. Apple fucking smarts. You asked me what they were, they're apples. Yeah, no, but it's the way you say it, you would know if you doesn't. If I want to learn to cook like you, I'll definitely buy your cookbook. But what, what, th what, this, what, it's just not for me. Why are you in business running a restaurant when you're completely passionless about talking about ingredients? It's a fucking apple. Yes, they're local apples. That's great. Okay, when was the last time you tasted one? It's been a while. I haven't been to the local orchard Tur to get an apple. Taru Farm, well, I've been there for the last two hours. Okay. It's like being around your parents when they're arguing, and it's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And uh, now I hated it. Yeah, it's a good apple. You don't get it, do you? I do get it. They're delicious. And so, talking to you about it, it's like, oh, really? It's an apple. Yeah. One a but, day but keeps the doctor away. Do? Am I supposed to jump up and down? No, no not at all. It's just becoming clearly evident that you are incredibly soulless when it comes to food. You're entitled okay. to your opinion. If Chef Gordon keeps pushing me, I just won't be here anymore. You won't see me today. As Brian cools off. OK, apples in. Gordon teaches Chris a new special. Everything has to be relaxed. Pork medallions with caramelized Braeburn apples. And then just finish with a hint of the mustard. Yeah? Yes. Hoping to put the Valentine's Day massacre behind them, the staff gears up for dinner service and takes advantage of the local produce. The apples are good. Are we, uh, are we ready to go, yes? Yeah. yeah? OK, guys, let's go. Let's get them in. I have no qualms about leaving. I feel bad for you guys, but there's no way. If you start swimming with that shit again, I will fucking leave. Let the bloodbath begin. And I'm going to do the best to get Brian more focused for dinner. Brian, why don't you show me your passion and leave the brigade tonight? Sure. It's fine. That's fine. That sounded enthusiastic, didn't it? I don't feel like I need to prove anything to him. I mean, I am who I am, and what are you going to do? Special, we have sauteed pork medallions. I will have the filet mignon. Harvest salad. You fire the entrees on table five. What's first up, uh, Brian? What's that? What's first up? What's uh, I'm running around trying to get all this stuff together. Um, with uh, five tickets on the board, uh, is it worth getting something going? Brian, it's a very quiet kitchen. Normally, it's quiet. We don't tend to yell and shout out. Or... So how do you guys know what's going on when no one's talking to each other? We haven't said anything. I guess I'm not running it then. That makes me angry and not getting served in the restaurant. Beginning of service, Brian told me he's going to run the kitchen and run it with some passion. But so far, I don't see it, I don't feel it, and the kitchen is backed up. Customers are complaining about waiting, and I don't think Brian actually gives a fuck. I'm just waiting for my for entree. What? Which one? 102, 102 still? OK, I'll get it. 102, how long? Two minutes, three minutes, four? Not really sure. How long are you waiting? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Fuck. Dude, this is taking forever. Brian, yeah. should you tell Nick to slow down the orders or what? He should know. I mean, we shouldn't have to tell him. He could tell that we're backed up. Oh my god. Come on. Brian is not putting in enough effort. It makes me frustrated. He needs to step up more. I feel pressured when someone's there watching me and telling me I can't do it, but I don't need him here yelling at me. That's not going to make me want to work any harder. Your lack of excitement and passion bugs me. 
I'm struggling to come to terms to why you're in business. I'm not like you. I, I can't get excited it's over it. It's not what you're doing to me. You've got to understand that. It's what you're doing to the business. The business for me is the bigger picture. I'm not here to massage your ego. I'm really sorry. Customers are complaining about waiting. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Uh, I just felt like I was being picked on and whatever. Panini Head, I'm worried about how much you're putting the business down. But you I'm won't not. accept that because you can't be honest with yourself. Because I'm not. Oh, okay, you're being what, a dick about it. What am I being a dick about? Talk just, to me. Just the way you talk don't to people. Don't run down the stairs like a little girl. Talk I'm not to gonna, me. I'm talking to you. You don't talk to people. That's your problem. Calling people a nini head. No, that's, I called you. I, I called that's you. like fucking I, sixth grade. How I fucking old are you? I, I don't need someone to tell me, you know, talk to me like that. I'm past that point in my life. It's just ridiculous. Enough is enough. I don't you. It's an hour into dinner service, and Brian has threatened to leave the restaurant. I'll leave it. With no food leaving the kitchen, oh, everything is at a standstill. You don't, you think, I don't think he's going to walk out tonight. Yes, you will. I don't, he's on the verge right now. He says he gives, says he gives it another hour. He says if Ramsey keeps digging in, then he's leaving. Brian did get a little frustrated with Chef Ramsey. And I don't know what's going through Brian's head right now. If I didn't give a shit, you know it. I would have left a long time ago. I'm dedicated to this place because I want to be here. I want to do this. I want, I want to make it work. All I want is just for you to show a little bit of interest. I am stop interested. Moping around. If I wasn't interested, yeah. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing this. Right. In my heart, I really I do care. Maybe I don't show it all the time, and I should, but I definitely need to show that I have more interest than what I'm perceived to have. Great, let's go. It's table 11. Table 11. Lovely. I gotta wrap a couple more pork. Table 102, an FO. Okay, here we are. I'm sorry about the wait, I apologize. Hit the bell, please. Wow, keep going, yes? That is going. Table three. Table three. Table three. All right. Thank you so much. We're braver now. That really goes well together. Thank you. We started pumping things out. It took a little bit while in the beginning, but once we got going, it, it went over pretty well. Thank you. Have a good one. Good news tonight is that the special sold out. Yes. Yeah? Great news. Brian, you're smiling for the first time since I met you. I'm changing right now. I mean, I need to be able to have a positive attitude all the time. Let me tell you something really seriously, honestly. If you actually think this restaurant in this community is going to be here in five years' time when you're mediocre, bang. We know that, you know, we have to do something different to make the business grow. Thank you. And you're absolutely spot on. We have to be special. And we have to cook locally. I think the products that we had today were excellent. So it would be good to, you know, put a lot of that into our menu. That's what we have to change. Yes. Tomorrow, I'm going to revamp the whole fucking place. I think we need a change, but I'm nervous, scared. Tomorrow morning, this place becomes the crown jewel within Cranberry. I really don't know what to expect. Is that clear? Sounds good. Is there anyone here that's not fired up? OK. Let's do it. With Brian finally on board, Chef Ramsay moves forward, transforming Hannah and Mason's from a dreary bistro into a delightful cafe. Right, good morning. Good morning. Excited? Yeah. Extremely excited. <laughs> I've got you an end. Oh, how do you feel? Oh, shit. That was awesome. Just... Happy with the end? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Now it's time to open a new chapter for Hannah Mason's. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. the floor. Oh my god, I just couldn't believe how great it looked when we walked in. A new deli counter showcasing local fresh products. Oh my god! We didn't just renovate this place, we changed the meaning of it. 
the breads, the homemade cupcakes, everything made locally. I like it. Local farms share the pride, and you show it off. This place can become synonymous with these farms. You know that? It's got synergy there. Oh, my god. It's amazing. It's, amazing. it's the happiest I've ever seen you. <laughs> <laughs> if this doesn't really light your fire, I don't know what will. I'm glad Chef Ramsay came, and you know he made these changes. It's amazing. It really is. And I'm hoping that you know it makes our business all the better. Beautiful. I think I'm in shock. The restaurant is gone. I just don't know. You don't know? Oh, no. You changed your mind? I don't know. It's a complete... Hannah Mason's closed last night. Hannah Mason's Bakery and Cafe opened today. I just don't know going forward. It's, I, mean, I mean, everyone's afraid of the unknown. I knew there was going to be changes, but this is a complete departure from what we've done. Hannah Mason didn't close last night. We've just changed. We've changed turned completely. A new completely. chapter. It's, oh, it's overwhelming. Just Embrace change. Just being a realist. You're not being a realist. You're being pessimistic. Chef Ramsay obliterated Hannah and Mason's as it was, and it's not going to work. Coming up. How will relaunch night be remembered in the history of Hannah and Mason's? So you want to tell the customers we can't be bothered to make a mashed potato? No, we can, sub find something. Embarrassing. We can sub something out. Yeah, tell them to fuck off. Does Chris have the courage to change? I don't feel like I'm in control at all. It's just excuse after excuse it's after excuse. excuse. And finally take charge of his kitchen. You own the place. You're the boss, chef. That's bullshit. Yeah, you damn straight. Right. Next on Kitchen Nightmares. Gordon has revealed that the new Hannah Ann Masons will be an upscale cafe and no longer a French bistro. But not everyone is comfortable with the change. Embrace change. Just being a realist. You're not being a realist, you're being pessimistic. Right. OK, we'll go through the menu. Previously, the menus, two menus before lunch and dinner, absolutely crazy. You've got no idea how simple this is. Fine dining has gone. Yes, it's small, but it's powerful. Fresh, vibrant, rustic, countryfied cuisine. Brian. I'm ready to get started, see what mm -hmm. all this stuff looks like. Chris. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> I just re and just reading the menu. Thinking in my head, it's different. It's it's definitely different. No Why did you ask me here? This is because we needed a kick in the ass. This is I, Jeff, this is it's just things going through my head, that's all. I well, let's see. Chris is really nervous to make the change just for the fear of losing business that we had. Yesterday, he astound me. Today, you're <laughs> shocking me. Because I'm shocked. Oh, just, my god! I need to get my hands in it. While Gordon had the staff focusing on the new menu, his team put together a farmer's market, an event to showcase the new relationship between Hannah and Mason's and the local farm community. Uh, let's go. Hi, guys. Good morning, Thank you. Chef. Uh, good morning, how are you? Right. Look. Oh, uh, fantastic. Awesome. So we've got some <laughs> tastes of olives, we've got some scones, get the staff involved, and uh, make sure all these menus go off as well, yes? Okay. Hello, everybody. Yes. A little chilly out today. Scone? Right, fries given out, a little taste. Let's go. So this is our new menu. We're reaching out to the community. It's going to flourish our business to a whole new level, you know? You got to see it. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. The new menu looks really good. Yeah. It looks great. Sure. Hi. Hi. Well, How are you? Congratulations. Thank you. For you. Yes, it is. Thank you. It was great for me to meet the local farmers. I love the idea of using locally. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed our apples. We did. They were awesome. Well, let's see if we can work something out so absolutely. you can use more local produce we all year round. Can. Yeah, we are yeah. going to absolutely do that. Great. I hope that people uh, are going to be happy that we're using low growers. And people are always happy about that. And you taste it. You definitely taste the difference. There's no doubt about that. After a successful farmer's market, Gordon introduces the new menu, a menu created to take full advantage of all that the local farms have to offer. Let's go through the menu, yes? First of all, just look at the color of it. It oozes what? Vibrancy, freshness. freshness. The dishes you can recognize easily. The ribeye sandwich, smoked chicken salad, beef hash with eggs, the entrees, a really nice uh, winter uh, free-range chicken stew, the lamb burger, great short ribs, uh, fish of the day is going to be the swordfish. Yeah. I like a lot of the items, and I like the menu, and I like the simplicity of it. But I think there's going to be a learning curve. Any questions? No. No? no? Excellent. 
Did you see the sign? It's Hannah and Mason's, not Hannah and Mason's. All right, come on in. We're right, right here. We have a couple changes to our menu, as you can see. The chef's special today is a grilled swordfish served with tarragon mashed potatoes. This morning, I thought Brian would be really anti any form of change, but he's actually embraced it quite well. But Chris, he's been on and off the train all day long, and the jury's out as far as I'm concerned on him. But tonight, we'll find out who really wants to turn this place around. It's been an interesting launch. Gordon knows that in order for Hannah and Mason's to make a profit, they must successfully flip tables and have two complete seatings. Chris. Yeah, Chef. We have to flip tables tonight. Well, what does that mean? Making money. I know you're not used to it, hey, but we've got to do it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm in control at all for what's going to happen this evening. Not until the tickets start rolling in. It's just the anticipation at this point. I think the special sounds really good, though, too. The, the swordfish. Here she comes. First order. Well done, yeah. Brian, one cup salad away, please. OK. Table four is up. Gently, gently good. Nice. Two and 20 gone, Brian. Uh, yes. Yeah, chef. First course on 23 just went. Right. This tastes so amazing. I did buy it. Much fresher. Mm -hmm. It tastes so fresh. Salad, soup, yeah. moving out. Yes. Quickly, yes. Yeah. Any, com any complaints? Any feedback? No complaints complaint about the freshness yet. No complaints about no the complaints freshness? No complaints about the freshness. That was a joke. Yes, it was. Yes, Good. sir. I've never seen it move so quick. You are. Yeah, let me just check. Yeah, yeah, I'm a yeah, thermometer out again. I'm alive. I'm, I got a pulse. Yeah, no, no, I'm just. It's moving. Yeah. Huh? Surely there must be a difference inside here. With Brian rising to the occasion and getting appetizers out promptly. Sorry? Go start turning those tables there now. Yes. It is now up to Chris to deliver the entrees so that the next round of customers can be seated shortly. Next table. Uh, right now, nothing else fired. Nothing else fired. Give me Nick, please. Anything about to be fired? Anything happening or? Got a turn. Chris. He's oh. killing me. I said you're killing me. Uh, Nick, are we falling behind or? Yes, uh, I think we are falling behind. Unbelievable. Last night, the appetizers took 20 minutes to come out. Tonight, they're only taking 12, but that's not the problem. The problem is the entrees aren't coming out quick enough, the customers are staying at the tables longer, and we need to flip those tables if we've got any chance of surviving. Get some tables up. Get some tables up. Right, yeah, with a queue at the door now, we've got to push these tables out. Go on, uh, what are you waiting for, Marie? Table four. Table four, yeah. Open up, buddy. What's going next? Come on. You got backing up with tickets. You got to talk to these two guys. Someone needs direction here a little bit. I'm going on a salmon and crab and a swordfish. So I need mashed potatoes, please. V86 mash, unless we got some somewhere else. Having run out of mashed potatoes, Chris makes a very telling decision. I'm not gonna be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. We were running low on mashed potatoes. Um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Can't we put potatoes on, Chris? I mean, by the time we get them peeled and get them, put them on, it might be tomorrow. Oh, here we go. It's just excuse after excuse after excuse. Excuse, excuse. You own the fucking place. Yeah, yeah, you damn sure. So you want to tell the fucking customers we can't be bothered to make a fucking mashed potato? We can sub something out. I just find it embarrassing. Why can't we sub something out? You said take it out. off. And we could sub something out. Just too easy. Ah, fuck it. Do the easy route. Yeah, cut the fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, chef. Yeah. That's bullshit. It's the heart of dinner service. And in an effort to keep up with the orders. Go start turning those tables there now. Yes. Huh? Hi. Chris decides to cut corners. I'm not going to be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. Oh, here we go. We were running low on mashed potatoes, um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Just too easy. Ah, oh, fuck it. Do the easy route. Yeah, tell them to fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, yeah. That's bullshit. All we need to do is peel half of the potatoes. We get them on. No? Celio, peel some potatoes, please. <laughs> I've tried to make it as simple as possible so you don't get backed up. You're all right, you're right. We're and I'm trying to relax things a little bit to speed things up a little bit. So, okay. Yeah? Yeah. So we get out of that fine dining mentality and sort of, you know, push it forward turn over. Bit. Okay. You'll be surprised over a year how many tables you turn quicker. Which we do. We need to turn them. The staff quickly preps the mashed potatoes in an attempt to get back on track and push entrees out. Uh, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Service, please. 
As Chris finds his groove, the kitchen catches up. And now, for the first time, this dining room is turning tables. She's going to sit you down, and we do have a couple of tables getting up in here. I promise, as soon as we get them clean, we'll get you right down. Get three more salmon and crabs up, a macaroni. We used to have nights where we would do 30 dinners, and it felt like 85. Everything's looking good, guys. Beautiful. The relaunch, we did 85. It felt like doing 30. It was a nice change, I got to say. All right, pick up, please. It's just going to take Chris a little while. He's not really good with change. I mean, think about it. We've had the same food on the menu for almost four years now, so change is not a thing for Chris. Are we starting to play down, or...? Yeah. yeah. With two dinner seatings completed, the new Hannah and Mason's has successfully cleared its first major hurdle. The buzz was phenomenal. The vibrance, the freshness, and the feedback was great. However, more importantly to this restaurant is quality control. A special is to enlighten a customer to what the chef's about. Uh, fair enough. You can make mash. Four potatoes peeled, bang. That's where we discipline ourselves. Yeah, you're right. Uh... You're right. I'm saying you're right. Relax, guys. <laughs> you're right. Brian, I want you and him to be better. Do you understand? I want you up there and not treading water down there. I look forward to the, the future. I, mean, I just, I still think there's a lot that we need to work out, um, Chris and I. So, you know, there's still some more changing to do, and this is a start. So, we're excited. I came here because you asked me to come here. Yeah, to put this restaurant back on the map. Yeah, the minute I've gone, yeah, it's up to you guys. But one thing you have to do is make money to survive. That means commitment, heart, desire, and a real hunger to make it work. I gave you a new menu. New decor, new equipment, new launch. What I cannot give you is the heart to make this successful. That can only come with it. And that's what it's going to take to get this place pumping. I think Brian sees that he can put his stamp on this place now as well. I think in the past, he thought it was only Chris's place, Chris putting his stamp on it. I think he, he sees now it's a clean slate, and he can put his thumbprint on it. Call me, yes? Yeah? I will. Yeah? Murray has your cell, right? She has my email. She has my cell, yeah, and she has my home address. One thing she hasn't got is my fucking hotel room key. Okay. <laughs> right, good night. Yes? Good night. Oh, no. oh. oh look at this. Yeah. Good night, guys. Thanks, yes. Jeff. Take Thank care. you. Take care. That was tough. Honestly, really tough. From the minute we had the Valentine's Day massacre to a successful relaunch tonight, it's been a tough week. And I personally feel that I've been dragging Nick, Brian, and Chris every inch of the way. And I don't know if they've got the desire to go that extra mile. But what I do know is these apples are delicious.